Hello, welcome to Film Dirt. I think we need to talk about Solo. It came out in 2018 and it seemed to split the fan base, didn't it? For me, I'm I'm quite okay with it. I think there was a, a lot of good things covered in this story. Namely, Han Solo starting life in the Imperial Navy. And I guess at the time, the Empire were the main police force, if you can compare it to a big corporation. So to enlist was probably the rite of passage at the time. And it's here he comes into contact with a couple of criminal-minded individuals and they go on some kind of side hustle to steal some coaxium, which is a, a very good, I guess you could say, four-star unleaded <laughs> vehicle fuel that is in very high demand and very valuable. It takes them all on an exciting mission where they're it's almost like holding up a, a train. It's like those old films where the train is going at full speed and you've got the highwayman kind of invading a gunpoint to steal the cargo. So it is kind of like those old stories from yesteryear that reminds me a lot of Indiana Jones in tone and style. And they have to meet up with several dodgy criminal types to progress the mission. And I think it's all handled very well. We kind of do get the feel that Han Solo is a kind of scoundrel, which was already set up in A New Hope. And here we're seeing him as a young, inexperienced version. And I think it's very tough to mimic Harrison Ford. I mean, he's such a great character and a great actor with his own certain charm. Any young actor coming in to replicate that is already <laughs> onto a negative, aren't they? Even before they start reading any script. Old and Aaron Reich that bravely takes this on, I think did really well. There was a lot of murmurings within the fan base that he wasn't up to it and he needed uh, an acting coach or something. I, I remember seeing those stories, which isn't unusual. A lot of acting coaches are on film sets and accent coaches as well, dialect coach. I know from my time in and around studios and film sets, it's perfectly normal. And if anyone needs help in mimicking a, a character that we all know so well, then it's whoever's playing Harrison Ford. And to be perfectly frank, I don't think he mimicked Harrison Ford at all, really. The voice is already pretty close, and at times, Han becomes animated and frustrated, and we get that in Solo. So we do see hints of the character we already know, but for the most part, Aaron Reich played him straight and fully sensible for most of it, unless there's times it all kicks off and, you know, you need to panic and <laughs> run. If we're imagining a younger version of Han... I think that is accomplished here. It doesn't look like Harrison Ford much, but we're not really expecting that. Unless you go the whole film with a CGI version of Ford, and then I don't think we're quite there yet. So I think getting another actor was the way to go. And also the cool smoothness of <laughs> Lando Calrissian, played brilliantly by Donald Glover. Again, doesn't much look like Billy D. Williams at all, but the character is there, and we can believe he's in a much more privileged position than Han Solo is. Isn't there a line, everything you've heard about me is true? So he's already that very cocky character, and sure of himself. It's just a shame that the, the backstory of this film was in the public eye as much as it was, because it didn't really need to come out that this film was in trouble or they fired directors. And this is becoming quite familiar ground for Disney, isn't it? And it's kind of getting annoying. They also fired Colin Trevorrow. He already had a story that would finish the sequel trilogy. That old adage, creative differences, meant that they had to part ways. 
And it's almost the same story we keep hearing. It's always creative differences, as if they've just met that day and they didn't know what each other wanted from a story. Surely they should outline the direction they intend to go in. This is costing them a lot of time and a lot of bad press in having to change the development situation at an advanced stage of filming. I hear they also shepherded out Gareth Edwards from Rogue One. I know he probably wasn't fired, but he needed assistance to finish the film with Tony Gilroy. Now, I'm assuming Tony Gilroy, he seems a very efficient filmmaker, and I hear he's also been a script doctor in Hollywood for many years. Something like that, he's, he's a good development hand. And he finished a film that was maybe getting a bit wayward. And also, wasn't Patty Jenkins developing some kind of Top Gun style film with X-Wings? I believe it was called Rogue Squadron. And that was looking quite interesting. I'd love to see a story that looks at the recruitment of the first X-Wing pilots into the Rebel Army. And again, I'm assuming creative differences meant they had to part ways. I'm hoping that can be resurrected at some point. It seems there's just not much communication going on. So here, Lord and Miller were apparently trying to make a comedic version of this story. I'm glad they didn't go that way. And how did they get to finishing the film 80 or 90% of the way, wasn't it reported? Ron Howard seems like a very safe pair of hands, very experienced filmmaker. And incredibly, he managed to not only finish the film, but apparently he reshot a lot of it in a very short space of time. And I'm assuming this was achieved because they've got this big stagecraft type stage, haven't they, which makes... A lot of location shooting a lot easier than it used to be. And of course we forget that they had to actually go to locations before where they don't need to now. Even the prequels where George Lucas liked a lot of blue screen photography and they could be placed anywhere in the world. For Attack of the Clones they actually went to Tunisia again instead of being in front of blue screen like a lot of the film was. They actually went to the desert again. All those shots are pretty much real for the most part. So, Ron Howard was allowed to quickly get the film done, and this is where we get the problem Disney had with this film, and why there isn't a sequel. It was incredibly expensive to make, depending on sources you look at. I saw a few here where it was almost 300 million, and really, that's their own fault. This is silly for such a large company like Disney to have so many similar issues ongoing with numerous projects. I was one of those people that wanted a solo sequel, and I'm hoping it's still on the cards. What they set up here can generate another movie. Especially with how it ended, and we're seeing a bit more into the criminal gangs getting more involved in Han's story, and seeing Darth Maul again. That really needs to be explored. I'd love to see a continuation of that story. Amelia Clark's story definitely looks interesting. Is she a double agent? Who knows at this point? I have to say, I, I also really like that the Falcon is completely spotless <laughs> and in mint condition before Han Solo got his hands on it and it turns into the grubby mess that we saw in the original trilogy. I love that. That's just his character in a nutshell where he just doesn't care and he's using the Falcon for every dirty job going. So let me touch on a few things that were negatives in my eyes. I didn't really like how he got the solo name. That just seemed strange to me. He was given that name when he enlisted because he didn't have a second name. In, in some ways, I'm thinking that's fine. He doesn't have a family heritage and he's, he's on his own. We could have left it at that. But for Solo to actually mean he's Solo, I don't know how that sits with me. <laughs> I'm more confused than anything. And also, I didn't quite understand the Kessel Run, parsecs being shown to be a measure of distance or time. I'm okay not quite understanding it, just based on the film alone. And it means you're having to do a little bit of research to fully understand that. 
I'm okay with maybe certain lies being told at times. People do exaggerate how big the fish was that they caught and how fast they drove to work. You know, little little white lies do happen. So I'm okay that we got a vague representation of how good the Falcon was recorded at. But I don't like the execution. I think it was supposed to be a race, wasn't it? And we got some kind of strange sequence. Yeah, I didn't quite understand. I've got to be honest, it wasn't that exciting either. And also, I think the film grading was just a little bit too dark overall. Give us a little bit of key light so we can see what is going on. And that very strange blue light that seems to be in a lot of movies nowadays, it just looks like a lamp on set. It doesn't look real at all, where everything is very lurid blue. I think you know which scene I'm talking about. It was one big scene with a very interesting looking alien, which I thought was great. It accentuates that something is fake instead of hiding it. But these are really minor issues I've got. Overall, I like the story. And even the so-called woke robot, the little sidekick that he had, I didn't think it was too intrusive. And the things that she said were things we do hear about in life nowadays anyway. If it was throughout the film, then I would think companies like this are in absolutely no position to lecture us about anything to do with morals. Just make a good movie. So despite the apparent low box office, and it wasn't low, it was just getting there a little bit slower than it should have, that was caused by Disney alone, and the bad publicity completely unnecessary. This is a great movie. And I think Ron Howard saved it and brought a lot of interesting things to the screen. So Disney, let's have the sequel and let's have less of the shenanigans that seem to be all too common with certain projects. So let's have a, an overall score. For me, it's four and a half stars. Despite everything that happened and changing director and going in an apparent different direction, I thought this was a great Star Wars story. So I'm glad to finally get a lot of these things off my chest with this film. And thanks for joining me for this little chat. Let me know if you agree or disagree or if I missed anything. At the time of reviewing this, I'm also about halfway through the Andor series, so I've got some more Star Wars stuff to talk about. I'll come back with my overall thoughts at the end of that series. So thanks again for joining me. It was good to talk to you and I hope to catch you again for next time. All the best to you and take care.